welcome Sister Gay Corbin. Thank you, Joan. When I listened to Patricia, I didn't see, I don't see her here. Over there. Here, here. Who read so beautifully letters which can really be very boring. Yes. <laughs> One line always gets a laugh. Always, always gets a laugh. So, you did good. <laughs> um, when I heard, be perfect, I wanted always uh, to say, that's something we're going toward. And I'm sure each of us felt not there yet, <laughs> right? Yeah. All right? There's another word that I think is somewhat of a synonym when talking about any subject. Be expert. I don't believe that there are experts on Father Guy. There is each of us striving to learn more and more about him, our first sisters, and all that we are about in a lifetime. So whatever God wants us to be, when we go to him, is the perfection he exacts of us, and nothing more. Now, I'd like to divide this bit like fall in three parts. Uh, the first part is a written preparation, and the second part, there are handouts which you haven't gotten yet, so that you won't fooster while I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third part is just like general conversation, and see if there is anything new, or some questions, or whatever. And if someone wants to interrupt me while I'm speaking, I might glare, but go ahead and do it. <laughs> Um, the first thing I want you to know is, the question I was asked before is, can you tell me who all those sisters are <laughs> on the page of the, the uh, program here? And what I did was guess. <laughs> because if you think, sure I know the first sisters, but if you think I could put the picture with the name, probably I could decide three and three, but I couldn't expertly tell you. But I do believe they're up on Facebook. So if you want to correct what I think, go ahead. But I'm not going to even try since they're up on Facebook, you know? They're also on the web. On the web? Facebook and the web. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you for asking me to share what I know and hopefully it will not show too much all that I don't know. The topic, spiritual, and if you can't hear me, raise a hand, please. The topic, spirituality, charism, and mission, in Gaiac's life and letters, because I want to add that, is something that I think is our life work. Taking each of those parts and just trying to unpack them in our own lives and then collectively when we come together to discern how they work for us. A few years ago, in September 2010 to be exact, there was an exhibit on Ellis Island in New York Harbor called Women and Spirit, Catholic Sisters in America. And I believe after Ellis Island, it went all over the place and I know it was here in California. In the exhibit, more than 400 religious uh, congregations came together for the first time to put their information together. There were rare artifacts, media presentations, compelling first-person accounts, and an engaging storyline inviting visitors into a world that few had ever seen, I'm sure. <laughs> At the time, Sister Rosamond Blanchett, our present General Superior, our Roz, was Associate Vicar for Religious for the Archdiocese of New York. And that office asked for Sister Volunteers to serve as hosts and guides for the six months that the exhibit was to be at Ellis Island before traveling around the country. I spent time there as a host and learned a great deal. 
During a break one day, when there were two of us hosting, I went down to the ancestry office. There, with very accommodating help from the people who work there, I found the entries and ships that brought my Irish grandmother, Catherine Kennedy, and her twin sister, Ellen, to New York. <laughs> Ellen came first, sailing from Queenstown, now Cork City, on the Etruria, arriving on April 24th, 1893. She must have written home, whatever, almost immediately, because my mom's mother, Catherine, my Grammy, as I called her, sailed the following month from the same port on the Orania, <laughs> arriving in New York on June 12th, 1893. Am I now going to say my Grammy met our friends on the ship? Because lots of encounters seem to go on between RSHMs and people on ships, what I found. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but my point is that it is very important for us as individuals to know where we came from. And more than that, it is wonderful to connect to such history. How much more for us as a community and extended family to connect to our congregational roots and all that this process entails, especially in terms of memories and practical spirituality. On the back wall of the original community room in the mother house, there is a series of old photographs, and I mean old. <laughs> They're of events from all over the world. There are no legends or names that go with them, and I said to myself, self, find the legends. <laughs> So I recognize some of the places and faces, but not all. And then finally, I got the legends, the names and places of those in the photos. And for some reason, the one I wrote down, with having, not knowing that I was coming here, is one called Marymount, Los Angeles. <laughs> the photo had to have been snapped in 1934 or five. The sisters are arranged in three rows, and it includes the following names, and I'd like to read them, because many of you, knowing your history, will know these names. And I'm reading the way they were in the legend, so they don't have Mother Mary or Sister whatever. Francoise O'Hare, Alphonsus, Eucaria, Dominic McHenry, St. Jude Cassidy, Aquinas Brown. You should say, pray for us. Emmanuel Gallagher, Carmelita Elliott, second row. <laughs> Rose DeLima, yes. Gertrude Kane, yes. Gerard Phelan, yes. M. Joseph Butler, yes. and in parentheses, Sup Jen. <laughs> Ignatius Carney, yes. Yes. Teresa Phelan, yes. Aidan yes. Keating, yes. first row. Lucy Thorpe, yes. Dibna Carroll, yes. Christopher. Yes. Yes. Bernadette Murphy yes. and St. Jude Mann. Yes. These are some of the women who connected me to you and to our congregational roots in Bézier. My responsibility today is to take those elastic words, spirituality, charism, and mission, and see how they come to us through Père Gaillac's letters. You will see how intriguing these become in context. I said intriguing. <laughs> I didn't say more interesting. <laughs> it's a lifetime of work to make them interesting. I'm convinced of that. But it's possible. You just have to take them one person at a time. Note also that I said I think they are elastic words. They stretch and stretch out. <laughs> and if they didn't, they are going to now. <laughs> Mission is defined in this context as the aim of an institute. For us, it is plain and simple, almost catechetical. Quote, to know God and make God known, 
to love God and make God loved. To imitate Jesus Christ that all may have life and have it to the full. The mission is constant, but it can be seen in different ways at different times. So today, we think of our mission in terms of our mission statement. And then there is charism, defined as the unique gift of the Spirit given to the church through the founder of an institute. The word charism can be defined, but the charism of an institute cannot, I think. It is personal. It's like dinner. I can define the word dinner, but that definition does not tell me what I'm going to eat when I sit down. <laughs> Nor can telling, telling me meat and potatoes or salad and a sandwich, if you prefer. No, doesn't tell me what I'm going to eat. Charism is like the all-posed question we've heard a lot of in the last month during the Olympic coverage. Mm -hmm. Quote, what does it feel like to win a gold medal at the Olympics? <laughs> I, quote. I can listen to all the enthusiastic or sad Olympians, the winners, the losers. I can even repeat the words they use, but I only know with certainty that those words, most of which appear to be some version of wow, oh, <laughs> only begin to describe the experience. I think that's what happens with charism. Charism is like that. It is what I experience. What made me connect or enter the RSHM and not another congregation. It is the connection between the founder and the potential student or postulant, even though I might be clueless at that point of the beginning about the congregation's founder. And I can tell you sincerely, I was clueless. <laughs> now before we go any further and I begin to unpack all this, will you please take a minute, okay, just to think about what it was that you felt made you say, I want to be part of that, or go to that school, or be part of the RSHM. Just a minute or two. Just don't go anywhere. Just think about that for a minute. <laughs> 